Welcome to another edition of Classroom Chronicle. I'm your host, Pete Braley. Now, you remember last year we couldn't even get into the classrooms because there were no kids there. They were learning at home. But I'm so excited because we had a chance recently to go to the Alfred E. Gomes School to find out about uh, the different options the kids have when it comes to learning math. Josh Almeida reached out to us and uh, he joins us today. Uh, what is your title, Josh? I can never remember all the lingo. No worries, I appreciate you having me. Uh, the actual title is Curriculum Data and Assessment Manager for Mathematics, but people also refer to me as the math guy. Okay, math guy. Math guy. Math guy. <laughs> you, uh, you were telling me before we started that uh, you've had You've had quite a career in the school system, right? <laughs> I mean, you've been yes. a principal. You've been, a t I assume, a teacher first. That's right. That's then right. a principal at that's one point. That's right. Right. That's right. And now this position dope up uh, opened up, and it allowed me the opportunity to to really lead the math work happening in our buildings, K to eight. So it's been it's been a fun position. But uh, it's always funny as new people come on board. They ask, you know, how long have you been at the district? And I always joke that I've been with the district since preschool. <laughs> Pretty much, right? <laughs> and that sums it up. So I've been lucky lucky enough to see. Uh, how the district operates, even from the student seat, as as a former student, um, and like like you said, as you said, uh, as a teacher, then administrator, and now central office. So it's, it's been where a did lot you of fun. go to elementary school? So I actually went to a private school. Okay, but was in the area for pre K. Mm -hmm. So went to Kennedy Camp as part of uh, the Pace program, and uh, right. went through there. All right. So tell me about the the kids. Are uh, we should encourage them on these video games, right? Yeah, so, so basically we're trying to encourage families, community partners, students, staff, whoever's watching this video that, you know, there's always an opportunity to learn and that students now have access, K-8, through New Bedford Public Schools, uh, through a program called iReady to access these learning games. Um, and, and as we've seen and as we've read, um, students that engage with learning games or games in general at an early age that align with the curriculum, they see uh, higher achievement in later grades. Okay, and the, so we should encourage this play. Is this uh, designed to be something to do at home after homework or? Absolutely, so it's a tool that teachers have access to and they've started to utilize it last year, but they also have access to it at home. And that's really what we're trying to encourage parents to you know, motivate and encourage students to, if they're bored and have nothing to do, um, to spend 10, 15 minutes you know, a day mm -hmm. on uh, what we call iReady learning games. Okay. Recently, we had a chance to go to the Gomes School and the kids showed us how they work. So let's watch that. Yes, let's go. My name is Oliver. I'm a grade four student in Gomes Elementary. And I'll be demonstrating how to play Hungry Fish Learning Game. The Hungry Fish Learning Game is designed for students in grade kindergarten to eighth grade. Students combine in integer bubbles to feed a fish with a specific target number. This reinforces the concept that there are multiple ways to compose and decompose a number by finding sums and differences. The range of target numbers includes inter integers from 3 to 100 multiples of tens multiples of hundreds and negative numbers for middle schoolers levels include rational numbers number operations with tens and hundreds the pizza learning game is designed for students grade two to five in this learning game students run a virtual pizza store they set prices, compare vendors for ingredients, and perform quick mental math to calculate the price of customer orders. This game t is timed and the timing changes to give the students challenging fluency practice change with addition, multiplication, and multi-step problems. So Oliver, is the Peach game your favorite? Yes. Yeah. How many different games do you play on this? Um, I think there's seven, but I mostly play three. One is the pizza game, one is the like fish game, and one is like a uh, like cloud game. Cloud game? Yeah, it's called Cloud Machine. Cloud Machine, okay. Do you find that you learn a lot from these games, or are they just fun? You just play it because it's fun? Yeah, I play it because it's fun, and it teaches you a lot. 
Yeah. And it and it is true because in the in the pizza game, it teaches you if you overprice stuff, the the customers are gonna be mad. And if you put a low price to it, that you're gonna lose a lot of money and the and you're losing more than you're earning. I don't think I knew that in fourth grade. I don't think I knew that. So, do you get to play? Do you play these at home? No, because I leave my computer charging here, but I like to play it when it's when I'm done with my lunch. I play them because it's fun, and my teacher tells me that it's a very good one. And I w <laughs> I've been practicing for this one. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you. Hi, my name is Jasmine. I'm a grade four student at Gomes Elementary, and I'll be demonstrating how to play the cloud machine learning game. The cloud machine learning game is designed students in grade three to eight. In the learning game cloud machine, students solve puzzles featuring concrete visual representatives of fractal spaces. The goal is to fill the cloud to a precise level of liquid by opening and closing a series of gates. The game helps students contextually understand fraction recognition equivalence and addition and subtraction of fractions with the same and different demonstrators. The balanced learning game is designed for students in grade K to eight. Students guide a bouncing ball to compare no numbers and find the location on the number line of integers, fractions, percentages, decimals, and pie charts. Hints help us build stronger from the number sense. For middle school students, problems include negative rational numbers and absolute value, values. So Jasmine, is it, are those your favorite games, the cloud game, and what was the second one? The bounce learning game. The bounce game? Yeah. Are those your favorites? Yes. Is this the first year that you've played games like this, or have you had it before? I've had this before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and you're in fourth grade, right? Yeah. How many uh, years have you been playing this, you know? Um, about like a year. Okay, so over a year you've been playing this? Mm -hmm. Do you play it mostly here at school or do you play these games at home? I play it mostly here at school, but I play it at home too. Oh, you do play at home too? Does anyone at home um, come and try to play it with you or try to figure it out? No. No? They just think that school is boring. <laughs> and who's that? Who do you have at home that thinks school is boring? My little brother. Oh, well, I bet you think he'd like these games when he goes to school? I don't know, maybe. Okay. Well, I'm glad you do. Thanks for playing for us. Welcome. Hi, my name is Ada. I'm from grade four um, GOM school. The Zoom learning game is designed for students grade K-5. Students move left and right and zoom in and out of the interactive number line to find missing values, compare numbers, and build number sense. Animals corresponding to each other magnitude make the concept of placing valid concrete from amoebas in the thousands to frogs in the ones, the dinosaurs in the thousands. The cupcake learning game is designed for students grade 2 A. In the learning game cupcakes st students run a cupcake delivery business in which they need to analyze word pro problems and engage in practice with proportions and the coordinate system. Through the game students budget for ingredients make deliveries on the coordinate system of city grid and take complex orders for the middle school students. These orders include ratio rate percentage and percentage change problems. So Hadel, is that a game, that, uh, which one is your favorite, cupcake or the one with the animals? Uh, cupcake. And why do you like it? Um, because I like cupcakes. <laughs> I thought, I was thinking that in my head. I, that would be my answer. I like cupcakes. Uh, 
Does it teach you anything about the, the business of making cupcakes and selling them? Yeah, I think it's really like, um, um, it's really uh, like um, an actual business. Like you have to buy stuff and like see which one is the better, um, the who like you can buy better stuff from and like um, which one um, it's gonna cost less and stuff. Right. So I think it's really like, cool that you it has so much like detail and stuff to it so and when you get so many questions right do you get like bonuses yeah i think like you get like um new ingredients like um new um uh flavors of stuff mm -hmm. uh like chocolate chip cookies and stuff like that like um sprinkles yeah so like when you get the like the um there's a thing that goes like up if you're going like good, like if you're getting more money or it yep. goes down if you're losing more money and stuff. And so like, um, and you gotta deliver them like with a bicycle that you can also uh, upgrade like to buy a new, um, like a car or something. To deliver them? Yeah. Yeah. That's not too bad you don't get real cupcakes if you get good, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So are these games available to, what did you say? Is it, is it all ages up to what? Right, so all of our students pre-K to eight have pre access to these learning games. Basically, okay. they access these games through what we call a clever account. They would know how to log in, whether it's a scan or an actual username and password. Uh, once they log in, they have access to an iReady icon, icon, and they, they can then either, they have options. They can practice skills and assignments that the teachers provided, or jump right into learning games. And what we've seen is, you know, when students are reluctant to do something that it's teacher assigned, uh, <laughs> we usually see them jump at the opportunity to, to play some of the games. And one of the things that it provides us with information on is not only you know how much time they've spent on the game and what skills they've been working on, but it also provides us with information on what we call factors of learning. Things like growth mindset, uh, productive struggle, uh, how are they doing with their math confidence and their persistence when you know the game starts to get hard, it detects like, what are they doing? Are they quitting and moving to another game? Do they, um, you know, how many wrong attempts or answers do they answer incorrectly before, you know, giving up? Um, so it monitors things like that that inform us as educators um, outside of the math world. So you get that feedback? Absolutely. So as students are spending time on the learning games, yep. we see time spent learning skills and learning factors is what we call them. Okay. So if parents are somehow not aware of this, either didn't see the, the flyer that went home or whatever, right. you want them to know that there is this opportunity out there. Right, so often, you know, students come home and it's like, do you have any homework? And usually the answer is no, we don't no. have, no, we no. don't have any homework. Well, there's, there's never a reason not to uh, encourage students to engage with the math learning games. Okay. And it might even help us understand, is it this, a lot of this new math too? Yeah, so we, we call it in new math, but really it's just, it's, it's packaged differently. It's okay. packaged differently. So um, math classrooms look very differently than they look when you or I were in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And really we're just trying to promote um, different ways to solve one problem and have conversations about our thinking behind the mathematics. Okay. We had fun. Now, how many games are there? Because kids only showed us a few. Right, so there's a total of eight and the students demoed six. Okay total of eight. Yes, sir. Getting tougher as you get older, I guess. <laughs> no, so the, again, the, the games are adaptive, so the games are appropriate for a range of grade levels, um, but the, the game does increase in difficulty as students get more and more problems correct. All right. And what is it called again? So it's iReady Learning Games. Okay. So ask your kids about that if they have any of those to do or would like to do when they're home. Josh, thanks so much. I appreciate the time. All right. Thank you for joining us on Classroom Chronicle. And uh, if you have something you think we should go out and explore, some classroom that you think we should see, let me know, either through email or on Twitter. It's at Pete Braley. For Classroom Chronicle, I'm Pete Braley. Take care. Hello and welcome to Classroom Chronicle. I'm Pete Braley. We had a chance to get on the road uh, today and come to Greater New Bedford Regional Vocational Technical High School. I'm always surprised at the many different classes and shops that they have here. We are here today to learn about the Marine Technology class. Let's go inside. <music> We 
with Mike McConnell right now here in the, what is this, the Marine Technology Department? Yep, Marine Technology. Uh, it goes by a few names, but we're, uh, because we're trying to appeal to all of the industry, uh, Marine Technology is what we're sticking with. Um, right now, what we're doing is actually Marine Service. So uh, what we'll see the kids doing in a little bit is uh, uh, actually working on some of the motors right now. So we really get right into it. Let's talk about this program. It's, it's new, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we just started up last year. Uh, we started as exploratory, and uh, basically what happens is the first half of the year, uh, freshmen that come into the school, they'll we'll get a big majority of the class that will come through and kind of check out what we do around here. Right. Uh, I have some brief activities for them to do, some kind of stuff that really gets them to see what we would do in this industry. Um, so from there, uh, January usually is when we uh, get the permanent kids in. and. Uh, when I got a good group of freshmen last year and they kind of came in, I had a full house of sophomores that were coming in eager and ready to go. And uh, yeah, I guess that's uh So are you a teacher or are you in the marine industry? What, what, uh, how does that work? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I'm a teacher here for sure. Uh, I started teaching here four years ago, actually in the collision shop. Okay. Um, I have both of my licenses. So I've just, I've been in the industry for, since I was younger than these guys. Um, you know, I've got family that have been doing this forever and uh, it's kind of, my background is a little bit of everything, okay. you know? So, uh, so it, was, it was a very easy decision for me to, uh, to get involved in, in opening the new program. Now, are you one of the many uh, former students of Vogue that have come back to be a teacher? I am, I graduated here in 2008 and uh, it, was, it was a very positive experience for me. And, uh, you know, after being in the trade for a little while, doing jobs here and there, working in different industries and, uh, you know, across from automotive through marine, I, I really wanted to figure out what could I do to give back. You know, I wanted some, we'll call it a little more fulfillment. And uh, I think I found it, you know, so, <laughs> so far so good. So what are the kids working on? What are we going to see today? So today, uh, the, the class, we're, we're getting right into uh, engine fundamentals. So we're getting right into all different style boat engines, inboards, outboards, two strokes, four strokes. Um, and what each kid is doing now is kind of going through a, a little checklist that they make uh, that goes through all the systems that are required to make sure you work. So that way these engines are ready to go. Um, there's a little bit of diagnostics that goes into that. So they'll have to figure out if something's not working, why is it not working and what do we have to do to get it working? Uh, and, and at that point, once they're ready to go, we'll actually be able to run these engines. Cool. Now, where did these things come from? Are these, uh, were they purchased by the school or does someone own this and needs work on it? So uh, the boats that are in the building right now are, were quote unquote donated. They were just free boats that people in the community were just trying to get rid of. Yeah. Um, you know, there's plenty of people that want to donate, that want to, you know, provide us with something that we can use as an educational uh, uh, tool, um, but not every boat really fits the description for something right. that we could use. Um, so I kind of use my best judgment to go through them and see if there's a lot of things on the boat that we can use to help teach the kids. And uh, so the boats that we have in here have basically all of their parts or the majority of the parts that they need. Um, and they, they require very little to either get running or be operational or be used for whatever the lesson is that day. Right. Um, the, when I, Go ahead. I was just going to say, when we came in today, uh, along with uh, Steve Walker, you were telling me that you're already hearing from people that want to hire these kids? Yeah, so we've been hearing now for a while uh, that there's there's so many jobs out right now. Um, I've, I've been hearing it for the past few years. You know, since I started teaching, you know, I, I get, you know, a job offer here or there. Um, but there was just, you know, since we opened the program, the phones rang so many times now just because there are shops that want to get somebody in that they can train that is interested in the trade uh, that they can really kind of mold to the way that they want them and that'll fit their organization and uh, you know we're, we're really eager to start eating up some of those jobs all right let's look around meet yeah, some of absolutely. the kids all right I am here with one of the students in the uh, Marine Technologies Department. Jacob, what's your last name? Rimels. Okay, Jacob, welcome. Uh, you're a sophomore, right? I am a sophomore. Okay. So last year, you, you were 
exposed to this and had a chance to experience this. What made you decide to make this your shop? So after the three-day exploratory, we did a little bit of everything. Um, I was uh, given an overview of everything that we would probably be doing throughout the four years. Since it is a new shop, there is some wiggle room. But I just thought that um, I love the water, and I'm just it's just something I'm passionate about. When you say you love the water, do you, do you have a chance to, to go out on the water on boats, or are you just uh, like the rest of us, love the coast? Uh, every once in a while, but uh, just I love the coast. Um, over the summer, I was able to work uh, at a marina in Dartmouth. Oh, cool. Yep, and that was definitely helped uh, getting that job by the, being in the shop and having the experience from the program. Okay. So, uh, where, where do you live, by the way? I didn't ask. I live in uh, Dartmouth. In Dartmouth. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what is there one aspect of this uh, shop that you like the most? Is it really getting into the engines or what? Mm -hmm. So, uh, I've definitely been narrowing down my focus onto outboard engines, uh, which you'll see, you see a couple here. Um, electrical is uh, definitely interests me. I've done a couple projects that have to do with that. But um, within my personal studies and my um, own uh, research, I think uh, outboard uh, are the most interesting to me. Okay. Now, I was told to ask you about Skills USA. So this was last year. You were there as a freshman? That's right. So Skills USA is a nationwide competition um, against all uh, trade schools. And uh, each program has a, a competition. So I competed in the Marine Service Technology category mm -hmm. as a freshman uh, in the district level, which is our school and all the schools around here. I uh, scored third place, which is a bronze medal. Nice. And then I was able to go to the state level, which was at a different high school. We took a bus there. And the, there were all these different stations administered by uh, Yamaha representatives. And that's a, a really large engine manufacturer. So I got to talk to a couple of them. And it was, a, it was a great learning experience. It was very difficult. Um, a lot of studying went into it, but it was definitely a good experience. So what time of year is that? Is that in the spring? That's uh, towards a little bit after Christmas. We started um, talking about that, getting ready. Um, I took a textbook home, started uh, reading that, and just doing everything I could to prepare with online resources and such. So something you might uh, explore again this year? I, d I definitely hope I can. Um, now that there are more people in the shop, everybody's kind of interested in it. So uh, we'll see who gets to go this year or maybe next year. And um, hopefully maybe uh, get a, a placement in, in the state competition this year. So is this something you could see yourself doing in the uh, future? Absolutely. This is definitely what I plan to do after high school. I've always been kind of a person to think ahead um, a couple years. And this is what I see myself doing for sure. All right. Well, uh, congratulations on that bronze medal and uh, good luck uh, on this year's competition. Thank you very much. This is Aaliyah Lopes, and she's also a sophomore here in this. Why, why did you choose this shop? I chose this shop because I have a lot of interest in boats and the way they work. And I have a couple boats at home, and I help my dad work on his motor. So it's better to understand, especially in school, since I have six days in shop, so I can know more about the motor and help him. And we go sailing. That's cool. So you can learn, you can learn why these things are happening, right? Yeah. Right. What are you working on here? Right now we're checking for fuel, spark, oil, compression. Um, we're trying to get the motor to run right now. Our motor isn't running because we have no spark. So we need to figure out why and we're going to do a spark test to figure all that out. Do you, uh, do you go home from class sometimes and tell your dad what you discovered that day? <laughs> all the time. All the time, huh? Yeah. Have, have you been able to help him out with the problem yet? Kind of not really. Like right now, nothing much on the motor, but he's had a, a hole in um, one of his boats and okay. we've been working with fiberglass. So I just help him like sand it out and try to help him cover up the hole. Cool. All right. You uh, Are you the only girl in the class? I think there's one more girl, but okay. yeah. Just Would you, girls. Are you surprised by that or do you see more and more girls getting involved? Kind of surprising because I mean, there's not much girls who want to do this shop because you're working on motors. Most girls would want to do like nursing, maybe mm -hmm. child care, but 
but now it's you, good. This, this yeah. is your thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, great. Good luck to you. Talking to Luke Porto now, and Luke, where are you from? I'm from New Bedford, Massachusetts. From New Bedford, okay. Yes. And what interested you in this class? You uh, you checked it out as a freshman? Yes, I did. I actually, it's the first shop I explored okay. coming here, so I was very excited. It caught my eye the first day I came in. Why, why is that? Uh, I've been around boats my whole life. I lived right near the downtown area, so where all the docks were, so I kind of grew up, you know, passing by all the boats and mm -hmm. such, so kind of just caught my eye as soon as I came in. Yeah. What uh, What do you like to do? What's a highlight of coming to this class? Um, working on engines, taking stuff apart, putting it back together. You know, learning. It's more of a learning experience for me because, you know, I want to get out and learn as much as possible before I leave here. Is this uh, Is this your career choice? What you want to do? It is. Yes. Yeah. I wanted to be a marine electrician. Okay. You know, it's a good job to get into. Good money, all that. How does that differ from a uh, an on-land electrician besides the fact that there's water involved? There's a lot of different components in uh, the electrical and wiring of the boat. Um, so a lot of the cables are different than on-land electrical, such as like solar and, you know, home electrical. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a different, so it's something new to learn as well. Yeah. So kind of just, you know, I want to challenge myself as much as possible before yeah. I leave. And would you recommend this class? So I mean, it's a new program. I can't believe it's only been here. This is its second year. Anybody who asked me what shop to go in, freshmen, I asked them to all come here because it's a good learning experience. And for anybody who can have the chance to come here, you know, take marine service technology, you get four shops in one. What are you working on right now? I'm working on a Johnson 115 uh, V4 right now. It's an outboard. And I'm just draining the oil out of it right now and then changing that and then hooking up to a battery to see if it starts. All right. Well, good luck with that. And good luck with, uh, with this course. Thank you. So why don't you tell us what they're doing? So we've got this simulator that uh, really allows them to kind of get the feel of what it would be like handling a boat in the water. Um, this particular simulator has a bunch of different activities in it uh, that have different you know, goals associated with them. So some of them can be timed, some of them can be with a, uh, an objective in mind. Um, but basically what it does is it, it really shows them how difficult it can be to navigate a boat through the water uh, because you know it has all the controls that you would find in a boat the throttle forward reverse gears and uh, you know you really see that it's it's kind of temperamental you know if, if you want to try to get one of these objectives done um, it's not as easy as it looks it's not just like your everyday video game you know to accomplish this stuff correctly you really got to play with uh, all the different controls on it to get it right does it throw some weather challenges at you yep you can change the wind you can change the current um, uh, some of the objectives, actually, you can actually change it. From, you know, there you go. I was just going to say uh, day to night, um, and you know, depending on you know what the objective is. I know there's one where it's a, it's a man overboard, so you got to actually pull up next to the guy that's in the water, and uh, you know, it, you got to fight against all the different elements that are uh, you know potentially in the way. Our thanks to Steve Walker for letting us know about this program and for inviting us out to see the kids in the Marine Technology uh, Department. I'll tell you, the, uh, these kids are all set with their plans for their future, and uh, they're already being hired today with phone calls coming in looking for more people for shops around the area. If you have a suggestion for us for something we should come out and visit on Classroom Chronicle and Showcase, you can send it to me in my email or it's at Pete Braley on Twitter. Until next time, I'm Pete Braley. Take care.